And I'm going to talk to you about uh, the Hero Awards campaign that was developed by um, David Hodgson over here from Quake, Aboriginal Islander Health Council. I was asked to come in to do the evaluation in phase two. The program started in 2010. The, uh, come be a hero, um, and then in 2011 it was taken to another stage which was the, the Choice is Yours campaign which you're seeing there. And, I, and, and this is talking about the evaluation of the Choice is Yours campaign. The reason why David and I thought this was a great thing to bring to this conference was because I think it presents a classic example of what happens in the community services sector when you go to do an evaluation of a program. It's got all those things that, you know, it had, it had a low budget for the evaluation, less than ideal data situation, lots of willing and really passionate people that could talk to us and that were really motivated to help. So it had all the pros and cons. So it's a good case study for us to ponder. Okay, so the first task for us to work out why we wanted to do this. And the reasons why Quake wanted to do the evaluation was they wanted to know, did they meet their objectives? So very summative, you know. And, and that's to service the funders who want to know if they've done that. Of course, we wanted to know how can it improve. And that, of course, was so that if they impressed the funders because they met their objectives, perhaps they might be able to get some more funding to go to the next phase. And that was really important. So it was also an informative process there. The challenge for us, which we'll go into more detail as I go through, but there was a number of data and design limitations that really made us have to do a pragmatic and, but, but still design a robust approach to the evaluation. Is there anything unusual about that? Does, uh, most programs in, in the community services sector would have those issues. So what we did in terms of the solution is we got this mix of complementary pieces of evidence. So we, we brought some robustness in there. We had lots of good research in there, um, despite all our limitations. But most importantly, combine that with strategic analysis and strategic thinking the creative, some of the creative side that Laurie's talked about, and, and weave that all together to deliver the outcome for the evaluation that we wanted. And the outcome was an approximate answer to the causal question, did we, did it perform as expected? And, and I feel really, we've got to feel really comfortable to say it was an approximate answer because of the limitations that we had. It's really interesting, Dave and I were just pondering before the presentation, if we had more money, would, would the findings be that much different? Um, and I suspect not. I think we would have, we would have felt a lot more confident about um, not having to defend the methodology, but I don't think that the findings would have been that different anyway. But still, we have to say it was an approximate answer because of our limitations. But importantly, though, we also were able to inform future program design and come up with some recommendations. So what I'd like to do now is hand over to David, because this is his baby, to talk about what it is, so you've just got some context before we talk about how we went about it. Um, so just to give you a bit of a snapshot of what the Hero Awards uh, project is about or the campaign is about, it involves a lot of community controlled health services across the state. Uh, so a lot of people are involved in the program. So basically it was about encouraging Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to come into health services for, their, the, for a 715, for a health check. And so what we were looking at uh, was building on a previous part of the campaign which is about uh, getting them in for the health check, and then we had the opportunity to look at um, building on that uh, previous campaign. So we wanted to continue to build the awareness of the importance of having a 715 health check, the understanding that having a relationship with the health service, with health workers within the health service, is going to benefit uh, one's health. So we wanted to continue to build the awareness. So there were campaign materials that were designed to be delivered to the community. Uh, that health workers could use uh, within their practice. The concept around prevention was a very clear uh, objective as well that we wanted to make sure that it was about taking control of your own health. And so that's where the choice is your sort of uh, theme came in around after Come Be Heroes, that after one person's been to be a health check is that there's, within the health services, that there's a number of ongoing allied health services, follow-up care and health promotion programs that are available to them that they can take participants in. And so that the resources were designed around what was being provided around the state um, by the different health services in a preventative. Then we also looked at what was happening nationally and uh, already Come Be A Hero was being based on the Close the Gap initiatives and the um, incentives that are uh, practices could um, take advantage of in the sense that when someone comes in for a health check, there would be incentives for the practice for um, doing those. So there was greater Medicare rebates for services to be able to do the work that they could potentially then help build and, and strengthen the capacity of the work that they could so do. So that was leading into the enhancing of the model of care. So how do we create that pathway between um, 
clinical care to uh, holistic care. So thinking about the prevention and holistic way of looking after a patient. So within the services, they could help uh, link in between the GP services and those that are sitting in um, the social work or the mental health or the uh, health promotion programs as well. So they could prov the resources would help link patients between the two uh, sectors within the... Using business. this image here and thinking about social marketing and the techniques that we were trying to use here is that we were focusing on a mid, up, like, you know, a midstream type approach. Uh, ultimately, we were working with the clinics themselves and the staff within the clinics about what the campaign is about and how they can use resources or how, how they can promote to their community what it is that they're it's doing. The resources that were developed were also focused on downstream and now, like you know, with the evaluation, the evaluation component was always thought about from the very start in that making sure that we have clear objectives that we can measure at the end in the sense that um, once we have a tool at the end of it, like the evaluation report, we can also use that as an advocacy tool to focus upstream as well. Uh, requiring social marketing as a component to achieving successful outcomes with Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander. So there was a number of resources that were developed uh, there's a statewide branding which came through as being a very strong uh, point about the um, pertinence of that with, within the community troy health sector. But again, thinking about how that statewide branding can support and develop locally driven initiatives. One-on-one um, -on -one support with the services themselves to buy a local uh, approach. And then thinking about the key, key messages that were in the campaign as well. So across the campaign, we identified what services were being provided within the community troy health services across the state. Um, and sort of eight core health services in the prevention and allied health services were instrumental uh, to what, what it is that the Hero Awards can be a hero or, and um, the Choices Yours campaign was about. So they were the eight key focuses. So out of understanding what those key areas were and the importance of um, their role is, how important their role is within the community, um, it's a positive way for services to be able to promote what it is that they are doing um, and to build that connection and that relationship with their community. So a number of resources were developed to achieve that, um, which were tangible resources that could be used in day-to-day -day practice with one-to-one -one clients as reminders and um, points of service type prompts in order for uh, health service officers or health workers to be able to think about when it is that they And also websites and Facebook pages in order to help build uh, the momentum of the message around um, the importance of prevention. Um, we had to find out, did it actually work? Did it, did it ultimately make um, more people come and present for health checks and follow-ups? So first of all though, I wanted to just share with you a quote from Michael Quinn Patton. The hardest thing I find to teach is how to go from data to recommendations. When you do an evaluation, you are looking at what has gone on, a history. But when you write recommendations, you are a futurist. Evaluations can help you make forecasts, but future decisions are not just a function of data. Making good, contextually grounded, politically savvy and doable recommendations is a sophisticated skill. A great evaluator can show the strengths and weaknesses of a program. They can gather good, credible data about what is working and not working. But that doesn't mean they know how to turn that into recommendations. And perhaps that's sometimes what I call part of the creative element of, of a, an evaluation. And, and I always let that quote sit by, in the back of my mind when I'm doing an evaluation. It, typically, doing an evaluation, we'd look at you know, my jigsaw puzzle of discovery is what I call it. So these are the sorts of things I would, I would pursue in any evaluation. I'd answer the question, why are we doing it? Um, which we talked about already. You know, We want to find out, did it work? But we also want to find out, in this case, how we can improve it. We also need to understand what good practice is. You know, that's looking at the literature, that's looking at what the industry are doing, is doing. Importantly, we need to get insights from clients and stakeholders using qualitative and quantitative research. Both, maybe only qualitative, maybe only quantitative, but we need to do that research and understand. We need to obtain insights into the sector trends and issues. So what's going on now, that might be looking through government, um, that might be looking with, talking with stakeholders. And we may need to work with industry specialists to provide technical expertise and depending on what the topic and, is. And then obviously analysing um, internal data from, from, the, from whatever the program is that we're evaluating. And also looking at the internal business review. What's their capabilities of this organisation? When we went to do the Hero Awards review, um, we had some different realities. And I guess, you know what, these are the realities that happen all the time, so I don't know why they're different. I mean, we should have expected these. But these are the sorts of things particular to this. There was no baseline data. Um, and remember David talked about the, one of the objectives was creating awareness of the need to go and do a health check, not necessarily to go and, and, and actually have the health check. So. Um, 
we had no baseline data and we had limited end of program data um, from the community controlled health services. Now there's lots of woodwork being done for the, for, to improve the data collection um, at Quake but that at, in 2010 that wasn't going and by 2013 it was it had only been you know for about 18 months in evolution so it wasn't there we yet. Had many external influences so and David mentioned some of these, but we had other campaigns in the, in, in the marketplace in the Queensland. One of them you might have heard of as Deadly Choices campaign about healthy living. Because this was a, there was a lot of work going on around closing the gap, we also had the practice incentive program uh, measures and the PBS co-payment measures, which were basically incentives for people to come and do the health checks and for incentives for the services to want to encourage health checks. Now, this, the, the Hero Awards was designed to complement that, but what it also meant is we didn't know whether, you know, those things alone were what driving people there or was it actually the Hero Awards or how much of each was doing And it. there was also um, other initiatives such as the Swap It, Don't Stop It campaign. Um, uh, so we really had no idea the, whether, you know, how much of which was contributing. That was a challenge for us. And that's where we were always going to get, I guess, um, picked up on any, and if we made too many outrageous claims about the impact of our program. Also, the health assessments and the follow-up services became the de facto measure. What people really wanted to know is, did more people come for a health check and did more people come for a follow-up? And yet we had very limited data to measure that um, because, as I said, the data collection was, was in really early days at this stage. Um, and of course there was significant inconsistency on how the campaign was executed locally. Now that was a good thing. And, and that was how it was meant to happen, and we learned a lot from that process, but it made it a little bit more complicated. Um, and of course, we had a limited budget. We did have Medicare um, Australia statistics to assess the trend, and we had a review of internal campaign statistics, so we knew how many posters went out and, and, and so on, how many people got onto Facebook, all those sorts of things. Importantly, we were able to interview 15 of the 22 community controlled health services and we did this by telephone, that was inexpensive, um, and, um, but incredibly um, useful and informative. We did um, semi-structured exploratory interviews with two key stakeholders um, and then we looked at a review of good practice, but also importantly, this was a social marketing campaign, that it was a behaviour change campaign, so we looked at the behaviour change theory as well to, to inform us. And then what we did, what I did, is we looked at the data we had internally. I thought, okay, look, we were, there, had, there was some data being collected, let's see if I can get something out of that data. In the end, we decided that if we used any of the internal data, the data from the community controlled health services about the numbers presenting and so on, we were going to probably get accused of data limit, using limited data, and so we chose not to use it um, at all. Uh, although you'll see later that it did help us, the process that I went through to decide that helped me um, uh, understand a few other things. So, despite the challenges, I think we had a fairly robust um, evidence to do the evaluation with. So, we had um, this data from Medicare, we had this data around social marketing and, and, and so on. We had a, did a thematic analysis with the qualitative research, which was really, really informative um, in terms of what was working, not working, and how could we improve. That was also, they were also able to tell us things like, what was the impact of this program? Look, we know we don't have the numbers of, you know, exactly what, what this program contributed to the number of health services, health checks, but what do you think? And we were able to get some trends in that process. Interestingly, you know, one of the things we did know from the National Medicare data was that um, Queensland had double the rate of health assessments compared to Victoria. We had three times the rate of health checks compared to Northern Territory and nearly 40% more than New South Wales. So clearly something was going on in Queensland that wasn't happening interstate. Now interstate had the Closing the Gap initiatives, etc. One of the few things that we had going on here that was different was this program. Still though, that was, you know, we didn't have the necessarily the data to prove that. So we really looked towards the qualitative research to help us to understand that. But, as Michael Patton said, evidence is not insight. We want to make these contextually grounded, politically savvy and doable recommendations. So we're going to have to go a step further after the evidence. We have to synthesise the data. Data doesn't lead automatically to insight. It's really important that insight comes from taking the data and the evidence and really looking at it in detail for the linkages um, between things. So a good example of this was when I did my analysis of um, the internal data about how many people presented for health checks and then also after I'd done the qualitative, I worked out that, you know, you know what's happened in reality, um, that 
the, every service was responding slightly differently based on their capacity to respond to this program. And that wasn't just a function of size, that was a function of things like um, their funding, their reporting capabilities, the development of their systems and processes, their staff turnover, management support, their governance status, and so on, was all influencing their ability to participate in this program. And that wouldn't have come unless we made, I wouldn't have got that sense of understanding unless we'd made all the linkages across the pieces of evidence. This is as much a creative process as it is analytical. And, you know, it includes really working with, ma um, with management back in the organisation to say, what, does, what do you think this means? And then what I think is really important is the business storytelling. It's the ability to then take those insights and engage the, the audience, whoever that might be, in your, for your client. And we needed to speak, we need to tap into them. We needed to use the language that, that, that helps them, um, that, that, that is consistent with the way they think, so that they get turned on by this and say, OK, yes, it's great, There's, here's more funding, or no, we get it, we support you to do more work. So that's really important in an evaluation as well. The moral of our story is that you need this judicious mix of complementary evidence. And, you know, whether that's limited or not, you just, you've got to just do the best you can and you can't let not having all that all the perfect evidence stop you. I have done, I've, I've done programs where, you know, if you, if, if, if you um, wanted to find out the specific influence of hero rewards in the Queensland market and, and block out all the other influences, you could, you know, do some very sophisticated regression analysis, but only if you had the data to do that and the money. We didn't have that. So we have to do the best we can with what we've got and, 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 um, and, and be able to defend it. Um, and then you have to combine that with this forensic data analysis, which is just really deep analysis and looking for the linkages. When you've done that, you can, you know, you can answer the questions. Did we achieve our objectives and why? What are the opportunities? What are the challenges? What can we do better? Importantly, you've got to create that business story. You've got to be able to talk to the people that matter and explain this to them in a way that that's going to turn them on. And finally, then, you can get recommendations for the future um, on how to prove that are strategic and insightful and not just a list of what we found.